Hey guys, this is Chris from Empire Bricks and welcome to another LEGO Star Wars review. Today we have something um, non-LEGO, something really special. Um, a friend of mine, Patrick Snake, sends me um, some goodies from time to time and this time he has sent me some custom brick arm Star Wars weapons. So um, I'm going to review them, show them to you and see what they look like in the hands of a figure um, and any uh, possible up and downsides of the guns. So let's start with the first one. Um, it's the Brick Arms EE3 gun. It's the weapon of choice uh, for a Boba Fett. So I put it in the hands of my uh, UCS Boba Fett figure and I think it looks absolutely great. Um, there's quite a lot of detail in here and it has somewhat of a shotgun or revolver look, which I think um, is very nice for a, a bounty hunter. Um, I think it looks pretty accurate to the original one. Uh, lots of details. You can even see a trigger inside uh, over there, so it's a very detailed um, uh, gun. There's basically only one uh, angle that you can have with this gun, uh, holding it by the designated um, handle over here. I'll just take it out, uh, which is molded perfectly for um, the arms of a figure. Um, you could try to hold it by the uh, barrel, I think. Uh, let's give that a try, but um, it will fit, um, but I have to push pretty hard, and I think if I would leave it in like this for a long time, it would actually bend the arm or hand of my minifigure um, since it's very, very tight. So I think the barrel is a little bit too wide, um, but it will still work uh, in the hands of a figure. So a nice um, a gun for Boba Fett. And you know, you don't need many of these, just one for your Boba Fett figure. And I think he looks absolutely amazing with this gun, um, contrary to the standardized uh, Lego guns that you could get with this figure. So a very nice one to start off with. Um, then we move on and we get two um, clone weapons. Now um, I have to do this correctly but I think these are the DC-15 and the DC-15S. Uh, the DC-15 being the standard and larger one. Um, we have seen these in the movies at least. Um, and I'm a little bit disappointed with this gun. It looks very accurate, very good. Um, it has the details on the side. You can see somewhat of a magazine over here. Um, lots of uh, molded details as you, as you can see. There's a trigger as well. But uh, kind of the downside of this uh, gun is, first of all, it's very large as you can see. Um, so um, it will have to, your figure has to lean back a little bit or at least be straight and it will tip off tip over very easily if it's not connected to studs because of the weight of the gun, uh, as you can see. But I think the biggest downside for this gun is that um, as an army builder, I would like to um, have my figure stand um, like this and then hold the gun. But as you can see, it will fit in the hand, but it's loose. It will not connect correctly. And that's kind of a missed opportunity. This uh, magazine or grenade launcher underneath um, it's just a little bit too small for a minifigure hand to hold and so it will be loose and you can actually pose your figure like this uh, The gun will stay uh, stay like it is uh, just by gravity, uh, but it's not actually attached So that's kind of a pity. You can also not really use the you know top part uh, For your figure to hold it. It's either too small or too big in any given place So this is the only uh, way to use the gun, which I think is a little bit of an unnatural uh, look um, this is not how a regular person would uh, hold a gun. So uh, a very accurate gun, uh, but a missed opportunity for um, this underneath side to hold the, uh, the gun for a figure. I think that it would have been uh, awesome if a figure could hold the gun over there um, and you could pose lots of clones with these guns. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a nice gun, but I wouldn't really recommend getting a lot of these since they are uh, not um, really massable. Moving on to the DC-15S, which is the smaller clone gun uh, used in the um, later stages of the Clone Wars, if I'm correct. Um, and this one looks uh, much more natural, almost like a handgun or a pistol. Um, so that's great. Um, as you can see, it fits easily in the hands of the figure. Less detail though, no trigger as you can see. Um, but still, it looks convincing as a DC-15S. Um, the handlebar is almost the same as that of Lego, so it works perfectly fine. Um, and with this one, it is very easy to uh, click it in and hold it like this. But um, I guess with this gun, it's um, 
less important because you wouldn't really want to pose your figures like this. Um, so this is a gun that you mostly have like this. Um, and it's good for mock building, I think, um, to use the gun um, just in shooting position. So that was the third weapon. Moving on to a fourth. And that is the classic E11 gun for um, Imperial Stormtroopers. Now, I think this might be my favorite. Um, it looks very accurate. It has the... Uh, magazine on the side, the scope, um, it has a trigger, very very detailed, looks very convincing um, as the original. Um, you can hold it in shooting position but unlike most of the other guns uh, you can actually hold it by the barrel easily um, and have different poses for your figure. Um, have them stand like this or you know just more possibilities with this gun because there's more uh, areas where you can give your figure the gun. So um, definitely my favorite um, an absolute classic and this is something that would look really good in mocks um, just for display and photography. I think this is a great great gun. Moving on we get to another weapon and it's another bounty hunter weapon of which um, I do not have the matching figure so I'm just going to use um, Boba Fett over here um, but um, this is the DLT 20A um, if I am correct, and this is the gun that IG-88 would use. Um, it's a very large gun again with a huge scope, lots of detail, uh, a trigger, a trigger. so um, a very nice weapon. Um, I really like the details on this one, but like the um, uh, clone uh, weapon, it's very large and it's for a droid figure, so the droid figure will definitely fall over if it's not attached to any studs. And Boba Fett has the advantage that he has some weight on the back. To keep him in balance so that works fine for him um, in shooting position it looks still a little bit unnatural but for some reason it looks better than the clone gun um, in my opinion and let's see if this works pulling it by the barrel and that works perfectly fine it's actually uh, it grips on tightly so I mean this is what I've would have wanted for the clone gun just to hold it like this um, it looks actually really good on the Boba Fett figure like this, as if he's waiting for Vader to give him any new assignments. Um, so the IG-88 gun, um, a very nice one indeed, um, and something that I would definitely uh, use for my figure if I uh, collect an IG-88 uh, gun ever again. So um, those are the weapons, uh, there is quite a few of them. Uh, so Patrick Snake, thank you so much for sending these over, uh, these Brick Arms weapons. Now. Uh, would I recommend it? Um, I'm not sure um, how you could get these weapons um, uh, as I have them right here in these amounts. Um, but the weapons that I showed, showed you are all available in the Brick Arms Blaster Pack. Um, so, um, But there's way more uh, guns in that Blaster Pack. Um, so, But that would be an easy way to get them. And I would definitely uh, recommend getting one of those Blaster Packs because uh, most of these guns, um, they just look really good for display. You just need one of them for each figure um, and it's very nice um, collectible for your um, minifigure collection to make it just look a little bit better and more realistic. If you're a mock builder I would definitely recommend this um, because you know any f uh, photograph will just look instantly better with the correct weapons in the hands of your figures. So guys that's it for my review of these Brick Arms guns and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you all next time.